a, a heart for your service. That's what it says in Spanish. Um, <clears throat> and that lady at the end is the lady that manages all those kids. The kids without the red shirts, pretty much, they're all orphans. They were all in that orphanage. They had little ones to teenagers. You know, there was a variety of ages there. And they were all glad that we were there. And they all kept telling us, you know, we want you all to come back and, and uh, spend time with us. Because there was a little girl in particular that clung to one of the sisters in the church. And she just wouldn't let go. She says, take me with you. Take me with you. Everybody was crying when we would see her because it's like, oh, my goodness, you know. How do you tell these kids, like, um, sorry, but I can't right now, you know. But she just clung to this one sister, and that sister was broken. And so she says, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I always want to take her with me, you know, but I can't. She's a single mother and has a little daughter, daughter of her own. Um, but they're all just very thirsty, you know, for love, for affection, something um, all these kids were in that orphanage. But anyway, um, <clears throat> let's pray, please. <laughs> and ask God to help us and be with me as I uh, talk to you a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening, Lord. We thank you for your blessings, for who you are, Jesus, in our lives, Lord, because we know that you are faithful, you are great, Lord, you are a wonderful God who is always with us, Lord, and who never leaves us, Father. We thank you, Father, because at one point, Lord, we were orphans, Lord Jesus, but you came and you died on the cross, Lord, to make us your children, Lord. And now you are our Father, uh, Jesus. And we thank you for that great gift that you gave to us, Lord. I pray that you give me the words, Lord, and that you help me to be sensible to your spirit, Lord, that I will say what you want me to say, Lord. Be with me and give me strength and calm my nerves. <laughs> In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen. 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 But well, like I said, it's good to be with you all here, and yes, we're missionaries to Mexico, and a little bit as far as I go, well, I'm stuck at home most of the days, uh, homeschooling Christopher, which has been a bit difficult this year. Last year when we first homeschooled, it was easy. He finished school even early, you know, he, was, he had like four months of vacation because he was just going through his schoolwork. Well, this year we just barely finished, and he still has some reading to do that, you know, all the written work is done, but he still has some reading to do. When we got to Mexico, we ended up having a lot of uh, difficulties. Um, we started off kind of sort of okay, but then after a while, he was uh, digging his heels, and I couldn't get him motivated to want to do his schoolwork. He didn't want to do school. Uh, at some point, he would tell us he didn't even want to be in Mexico anymore, and we didn't understand why. It was like, well, I thought you liked it here. You know, what's going on? But he wouldn't tell us, so finally we sat down with him one day and spoke with him, and he finally broke down and cried and cried. Um, but anyway, he, um, he said that he missed his Grammy and his Grampy and Rachel and my mom, his grandmother. He calls him abuela and abuelo, my parents, and Grammy and Grampy are Brett and Susan. And so he broke down, he was crying. Still makes me cry. Um, and then he just missed them a lot. You know, there he didn't have any friends and we were still new there. So he was getting adjusted. And, um, but eventually we worked out through that and so we kept on talking to him and encouraging him and God has blessed him. Thank you, baby. Aww. God has blessed him with friends and he's adjusted now and he loves it. He calls it his home now. He's, no, he's sad to leave his Grammy and his Grampy and when he sees my mom and everything, you know, he enjoys the time that we are at home with either one of them. But after a while he's like, Mom, when are we going to go home? Papi, when are we going home? But for him, home now is Mexico. God has given him friends after that. Um, we prayed with him, and now he has several friends in the church, friends that are good friends with us as well, and they go to our house, and we go to their house. Um, and so God has blessed him, and he's adjusted better. But because of a lot of stuff there in Mexico, and we're still getting set up, and different things that we had to go through, school would be put aside. So the, along with that, it made us take a little bit longer. But um, last time that I was here, I think I shared with you all, it is hard to be a missionary's wife. I said, no, Lord, I don't want to go. And I struggled to accept the he was ready and let's go now, you know, and I'm like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> you know, I got to be sure of this. But while he was going through language school, and I think I shared this with you last time that I was here, they got put me through a school of my own uh, while he was in language school throughout the day. I was at home, Christopher was going to public school, but I would be at home and um, going through different things that God used in my life to strengthen my faith and to help me rely more on Him. 
you know, because I used to say, well, I trust God, you know, God's going to provide. And when he said he was going, I said, okay, well, you go to school, I'll go to work, and that's how we'll pay the bills. I've never had a hard time finding a job, blah, 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 blah. Well, we get there, and application after application, after month after month, and nothing. <laughs> and there'd be interviews that I would go, I went to quite a bit of interviews, but then nothing would ever happen. And I said, Lord, what's going on, you know? It's like, you said you provide for us, you, you know, you promised, it says in your word that we won't lack anything, that you're going to give it to us. Well, give me the job, I need the job, you know? I was like, give me the job so that we can pay the bills, we can put food on the table. Our car payments were starting to get behind. <laughs> Our groceries were dwindling down. Um, we could pay the rent, but I think we only paid the rent the first two months, maybe three months, two months. The first two months that we were there after that, we stopped paying the rent. But because it was from the school, they came to us and they said, look, we know that you're going through a hard time or whatever, don't worry about the rent, you'll pay us when you can. And it's like, okay, all right. So we didn't quit school, we kept on being there. And practically throughout the whole nine months that we were there, we never paid rent. Once in a while we would give him $10, $5, whatever we could afford because we had to keep money for gas as well. Because we are like, well, probably gas will just be a little bit more because I was waiting for them to go and take the cars. We had two at that time. And I said, well, the bank will probably come and repossess them anytime. <laughs> you know, because we were already behind on the vehicles as well, like two months or three months, because we tried to pay those, but it was difficult. And I kept asking God, Lord, I don't know what it is that you're doing, but I would hear him tell me, you have to trust in me. And I'm like, I am trusting in you. What more do you want? Are you just not giving it to me. But it was all in his time. And he would tell me, look at the birds, like it says in, in the word, right? Look at the birds in the field. Who, uh, who feeds them and who takes care of them. Look at the flowers. They dress even better than Solomon, you know? And I said, yeah, okay, right? those are little birds. You give them, they have their seeds all over the place. But I need, <laughs> you know, I need it now. It's like, no, you got to wait to trust in me. And then finally I heard him tell me, you're not going to find a job. You just need to quit it and rely on me. But I thought I was, you know. But God showed me there that, we have to trust in him in a, in a deeper way. I had to learn to trust in him in a deeper way. That his blessings don't always come through work outside, you know. We have this notion sometimes like, well, I have to work. You know, I have to work for God to bless me. But God was teaching me, yes, there's a time to work, but there's a time that also you have to just trust in me and rely on me because it might not be possible for whatever reason. And so he worked that way and I said, okay, Lord. When I finally gave it up, and I said, all right, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to worry. But I did worry to a certain point, but little by little, God showed me his faithfulness. And uh, the vehicles got sold, like we were asking. We were able to pay them off and get rid of one of them. We stayed with one. Um, uh, people from the church, all of a sudden, from right there in the school, they would bless us with groceries. They would come to the house all of a sudden and say, I thought of you today, and they come with two bags full of groceries, chicken, milk, all sorts of stuff. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, people will give us those handshakes at church, and they'd be like, I just thought to give you this, and I'm like, okay. You know, so little by little, God provided, and my faith went increasing, and I said, okay, Lord, I see now, and I eventually I got to the point where I'm like, okay, God, it's your way. It's not my way, but it's your way, however you want it. I'm cool with that, you know. And when I finally did that, I saw that things just turned around. You know, God just blessed us, and He enabled us to be able to be there and go through it all, and He provided for us every step of the way until now. We haven't lacked. He's been with us. Um, sometimes our support is not where we would like to see it, but I guess, thank God, we're missionaries in Mexico because the dollar gets stretched over there. <laughs> and so we've been able to, to live well, comfortably, you know, it's, it's good, God's been good to us, and, and even people over there in Mexico, they see us and they're like, well, you're from the States, you're rich. I was like, I wish, <laughs> you know? But they, they look at you from the outside. They're used to seeing with their eyes, you know? And if you have a nice house, if you dress okay, therefore you're rich, just because you're from the States, you're rich. And it's like, well, you know? It's because of God that we have what we have, and it's not because I'm rich, believe me. And they do try to hit stuff for money and all, but we learned our lesson, and now we say, no, we can't, no, we can't. Because if we start saying, sure, I can lend you, all of a sudden they begin to look at you with uh, dollar signs. You're the bank. 
you know, and then you'll be in trouble later on if you say, I can't this time, you know. So we had to learn that lesson, um, not to be so giving or wanting to help them because it actually cripples them, you know, in a way. So anyways, but, you know, God's been good. He's been with us throughout our time in Mexico, and he's been faithful, and he's been providing for us. And um, we need to remember to thank him for everything that he does for us. You know, every little thing that he does for us, it's, it's because of God. It's because of who he is. And the title that um, my message for today is, is Taking God for Granted. That's the title of my message, the message that the Lord gave to me. Okay, for the very first time that I'm preaching, or if you call it preaching, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> but I'll be speaking to you on the Word of God. It's taking uh, God for granted. And we're going to look at Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. And the verse reads, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Yeah. <clears throat> what does this have to do with taking God for granted? Okay. Let's look at the, um, what granted means. I looked it up, and when we take someone or something for granted, it is to expect someone or something to be always available to serve in some way without thanks or recognition. To value someone or something too lightly. Take somebody for granted is to not show that you are grateful to someone for helping you or that you are happy they are with you, often because they have helped you or have been with you so often. So that is what taking somebody for granted is all about. We never acknowledge them. We don't say thank you. We don't recognize their efforts. We don't recognize what they've done. We just go about our days expecting it. Like it says here, you know, we expect it to always be available. And sometimes it's what we do with God. We take it for granted. He's God. He's everywhere. Therefore, we just, well, that's his quality, right? It's who he is. So now I'm asking you, ask yourselves, you know, do I take God for granted when we go through life? Do I take God for granted? Do I expect him to always be there to serve me, to provide for me, to give me what I need? <clears throat> and do I just take him for granted? I don't even acknowledge what he does provide. You know, thank you God, or worship him. Give him the recognition that is due. You know, do we value who he is for us? You know, do we give him that price? Do we... Do we, do we show him what he is exactly to us, you know? We go about our days and we don't even think about what our next step will be. You know, we breathe the air day in and day out. We wake up, we open our eyes, um, and we just do it. We don't think about it. Lord, am I going to wake up tomorrow? You know, we go to sleep knowing that tomorrow I'm going to wake up, and we even have the plans already made. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do that, I have to go to the store, I have to go to the bank, I have... You know, and you, you have your list, you know. We just take it for granted that tomorrow will come, and we live it. Our days flow smoothly for the most part. Every breath that is taken, it's taken without thought. We rely on the air that is, and it's always been. It's what we know, and that's what we're used to. We take it for granted. Because, you know, who thinks about breathing? <laughs> we just do it, you know. We take it for granted. It's there. It's something that's always there. We become so familiar with it that... We don't even think about it anymore. As believers in Christ, do we treat God the same way? Do we expect Him to always be available to serve us without thanks or recognition? I mean, God knows everything, right? So we think, well, He knows that I'm happy. He knows that I'm grateful. I don't have to tell Him. He's all-knowing. He's always there. He's God. You know, why should I have to say, thank you, God? You know, He knows it. He's God. He knows everything. And so we tend to think that way, and we take him for granted. <clears throat> um, when we become so familiar with someone, we fall into taking them for granted. The Word of God states that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And when we truly love, then we will not take anyone, or especially God, for granted. Because love is more than just a feeling. It's not something that you just say, oh, I love you, you know. We don't, when we're married, those of us that are married, we don't say, I love you, honey, and that's it, and walk out the door, and you never show that you love them. 
You know, I know I tell my husband, it's like, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> and he's like, I? Yeah, I'm telling him, like, yeah, you're telling me, show me. You know, it's like, you barely give me a kiss sometimes or whatever. Sometimes I have to stop him when he's going out the door and I'm like, hey. And he's like, what? I'm like, I love you too. Goodbye. You know, <laughs> give me a kiss. And he's like, I, you know. But it's because we're around each other so often that we take each other for granted. We take our spouse, our, our wife, our husbands for granted, you know, because we're used to them. They're there. And they know that we love them, you know, so we don't think of showing it to them. Where is that recognition, that thank you, that um, the value that they deserve, you know, or the value that I deserve, <laughs> you know, for them to, to show, you know, that you appreciate that they're with you, that they're at your side helping you, you know, walking with you. <clears throat> so we take God for granted the same way. Love is, love is not passive. Love is active. Because it says that we have to love God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And how do we do that? Well... Love is active, and we can show God that we love Him through our worship, you know. Worship needs to be our lifestyle. It's not just something that we do when we come here to church, and we sing songs, and raise our hands, and clap our hands, and have worship God, you know, only on Wednesdays, Sundays, Fridays, depending on when your services are, for the most part, Wednesdays, Fridays, or Sundays, you know. We come and we worship God together and sing songs, and it's good, because we're supposed to come together and worship God, you know. He demands that, that we come together. Like my husband was preaching this morning, in unity, we shouldn't leave that aside. We need to come together because the body will, will um, strengthen itself that way when we come together, you know, as, as a body to worship Christ. But our true worship should be a lifestyle. It should be something that we do outside these doors, you know. And I'm not saying you're going to be walking around skipping and hop, hopping and clapping and stuff like that. But everything that we do is worship. You know, I was listening to another preacher a while back ago about what is worship. And he was saying that when guys sit watching a football game, those that are avid uh, sports players, you know, they, they sit there and, and they make a goal or something. And what do they do? They stand up. I've seen them too, you know. They stand up from, their, from the couch like, yes, goal, oh, you know. We did it. We won. And they show all this excitement and everything. That is a type of worship. You know, they're, they're happy. They're exciting. <laughs> You know, they, they, it's the type of worship that they're doing because he was saying that we all have that need. God had placed it in us, you know, to worship. It's something that we all have. It just depends what is the object of our worship. You know, are, is it going to be that football game every time? Is it just things that we like? But it's, we should, our worship should be Jesus in everything that we do. Our testimony, our words, in song, and dance, and how we serve with others, you know, that all, everything is worship. Everything that we do is worship. Worship is to declare the value or merit of something. Therefore, to worship God is to declare that He is worthy. Yeah. In other words, we attribute or give honor to God. We glorify Him for who He is and what He has done for us. In Psalms 105, verses 1 through 5, it says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing songs to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works which He has done, His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. Our worship is a response to the revelation of God himself. If God does not reveal himself to us, then it would be impossible for us to worship him accordingly. Like I said, worship should be our lifestyle. And it's mentioned in the psalm where it says that we need to seek his face, his presence continually. How can we take God for granted when we are continually worshiping who he is to us? There's no way that you can take God for granted if we constantly remember what he has done for us when we thank Him, when we give Him the recognition that He deserves, the value, the, the gratefulness, the thank you that we must show Him every day. When we worship, um, sorry. when worship is our lifestyle, we cannot disconnect our lives from who we are in church and who we are in the outside world, but we'll be one and the same in and out of church because we will eat, sleep, and breathe Jesus continually. We remember all that He has done, and that is why we worship Him, to remember. 
you know, we remember what he's done and that is enough for us to give us a reason to worship because God is so big, God is so wonderful that he does something in our lives every day. You know, sometimes we go about and when we ask for testimonies, who has a testimony? Well, nobody raises their hands. You know, it's like, I guess, and some people say, well, I guess God didn't do anything this week, you know. But he does. If we really examine our lives, God has done something, you know, even in just the fact that we woke up every morning, you know, but we take it for granted, you know, we take for granted that God is giving us that life, that gift of life, one more day, we just take it for granted. What did God do this week? Nothing, you know, no, nothing. He just let you wake up, you know, he put food on your table, he allowed you to have your work, he allowed you to have a vehicle, um, he allowed you to be complete and whole, you know, in your body, you have your legs, you have your arms, you know, and we should be grateful, we should be thankful that God is with us and that God has done all this for us. So we worship Him and while we worship, we remember. To remember, that is why we worship. We worship Him because we remember what He has done for us. Psalms 22:27 says, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. In this Psalms, it says right there that everybody's going to, um, the ends of the world, they're going to remember and they're going to turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations, in other words, every single group of people, not just a certain race or a certain ethnic, but everybody. It's talking about all the families, all the, of the nations, the ethnic, shall worship God because we're going to remember. You know, it, um, I remember that there's a verse that says, uh, Every knee and every tongue will confess that He is God. There's going to come a day when they will, they're going to remember. Because everybody knows that there is a God, you know. Even the people that don't believe in God, it's like, there has to be a God. They, something in them tells them that there is a God, that there's something that created this. Whether they want to believe that it was a major being or whatever it was, but everybody has that, you know, that something created this earth because God has placed it in us. You know, we need to seek Him. We need to find who that person is, our Creator, our Lord Jesus Christ. We just don't acknowledge Him. We don't give Him uh, the value that He deserves. Amen. Ephesians 2, verses 12 to 13 say, Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We must not forget the great sacrifice he did on the cross. Amen. He came and died on a cross so we could be called his children and be grafted into his kingdom and inherit the blessings that Abraham was given. That through him all the nations or the peoples of the world would be blessed. <clears throat> we want God to give us these blessings. We expect all these things from the Lord, but yet we don't acknowledge Him. You know, we go about our days knowing that He's God, but it seems like we just know and we leave it there. We don't do anything with it. You know, it's just knowledge, but we don't do anything with that knowledge. What good is it to know that I have a brand new house, but yet I live in a cardboard box? You know, I know that I have a house, but yet I live like a pauper. You know, it's, what good is that? You know, we need to acknowledge the Lord and give Him what He deserves. We must not, um, sorry, Genesis 12, 2 to 3, uh, what I was going back to, uh, where God gives Abraham the promise. It says that I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. If we truly love Him with all our heart, mind, and strength, we will love him back by showing we are grateful for all that he has done when we remember and worship him. Not only does God want us to worship and remember what he has done, but he also wants for us to seek him. We need to seek him. And as we were worshiping, um, to go back about worship, um, when she was, uh, Mary was saying about the style of, of the songs that were going, if we look at the songs that we sang today, I think... Um, that God placed them in their heart for a reason, you know, because they all talk about seeking Him and uh, being with an undivided attention. You know, if we don't take God for granted, it's because our attention is on Him and only Him. We're going to give Him the 
um, what he deserves, the acknowledgement, because we have undivided attention, you know, because we want to be that sanctuary that he created us to be, you know, pure and holy. And when we're devoted to him, then there's no way that we can take him for granted. We're going to be acknowledging him constantly, who he is and his greatness. We're going to want more of him, so we're going to have to seek him. So we have to worship him, because we remember we worship him. And we also have to seek him. It says, Psalms 34, 8 through 10 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Amen. Amen. It says here that we shall not lack any good thing. God made us part of his people and partakers of the blessing. The blessings we enjoy are ours, not because we have the right to them, but because it pleases God, our creator and savior, to give them to us. We take them for granted and expect God to bless us with all sorts of things just because we are his children. But would it be right for any of us to walk into a bank and demand that we receive $10 million just because I'm the son, I'm the daughter of a great God? And it says in his word that he's the owner, um, that he has a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. So if I can walk into a bank and just say, hey, give me $10 million, you know. My dad owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. They're going to look at us and be like, I think they escaped the funny, you know, <laughs> the funny farm. <laughs> What's going on here? You know, we can't do that. You know, they would think that we're crazy. But yet, as his children, we don't acknowledge him. We don't give him um, value that he deserves, but yet we demand such things as a house, cars, finances, God's protection in our lives, His love, His mercy for us. You know, we ask God to give those things to us every day. You know, most of our prayers, if we were to be careful and, and pay attention to ourselves, most of them are asking, Lord, I need, Lord, I want, Lord, I need, Lord, this, and Lord, that. And it's all about what we need and what we have to have, what we think we have to have. You know, and we're always asking Him. There are petitions. I need this. I need... Yeah, I need protection. I need you to give me this. It's because I'm going to go traveling. So I need your traveling mercies. You know, we're lacking in finances, Lord. And your word says that, you know, you're going to provide. You're Jehovah Jireh. And we quote back his scripture. And we demand of him, you know, like, it says you're going to do it, Lord. And you're not a liar. You know, you're going to come through with it. And we expect him to do that. But who are we to demand anything from our Lord? It says, this verse is very clear to state that those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You know, he's telling us, you have to seek me. Seek me and you're not going to lack any good thing because he is faithful. His word is faithful. And those promises that he has given to us, he will come through with them. But we have stuff to do, you know, we have our part to do. We can't just sit here and say, Lord, give me. <laughs> you know, it, he tells us right here in this verse, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Amen. 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 It is our duty as his children is to worship him because of what he has done and to seek him. Amen. Amen. We need to seek him in prayer. Um, Second Chronicles 7.14, Mary also said it while she was singing. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Here we see again that we must seek his presence in prayer, and recognize that we have sinned, then and only then will God listen, forgive, and heal, or restore. But it says that we must seek him in prayer. We have to seek him. We shouldn't take him for granted and just say, you know, Lord, I need your help. <laughs> you know, he wants us to look for him. He's willing to give to us all these things, but at the same time, he wants us to look for him. You know, not just sit there on a pew and say, okay, Lord, this is looking for you. I came to church. I'm seeking you. You know, he wants more than that. He wants us to seek him in our prayer closets, yes. studying the word, um, you know, that he left behind. It's what we breathe. It's our daily bread. This is the last song that we sang. You know, it's what, it's what God desires for us. You know, seek me and you will find me. 
So we have to seek him in prayer. We have to study his word, which is my next point. I'm getting ahead. <laughs> Uh, plenty of times it says, uh, plenty of times though we want the promise of healing and expect God to answer because we prayed and asked Him during our time of need. But if we recall in Psalms 105, which we read a little while ago, we are told to seek His face continually, not only when we are in need. Most of the time we pray, but we pray for our needs. That's why we look for God. That's why we seek Him, because we need something. And we only seek Him when we need something. When, uh, in Spanish it says, when my shoe is um, tight. <laughs> it's like, that's, you know, because you, you end up in, in tight situations, and that's when you remember, God, I need your help. You know, then we go to His Word, and we try to find something that's going to give us peace, because we're going to find where it says that He will always be with me till the ends of the earth, that He's my provider, you know, that He is faithful. And, and he loves me, and he died for me, and, and we see it all with a, with a me, 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 <laughs> me, me, me type of version. You know, everything that says in the Word, it's, it's for me, it's to help me, it's because he loved me, he died on the cross. You know, and it goes way further than that, you know. Um, so we need to seek his, we need to seek him, we need to seek him out in prayer. It says uh, also in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. He tells us throughout his whole word, these are just some verses that I found, but there's plenty others where God asks us to pray. And of course, pray without ceasing is a very popular one. You know, we need to, we need to pray continually. In other words, we are seeking Him continually, <coughs> not just when I come to church in the mornings or in the evenings, during worship, during services, but we must seek Him all the time. It says to pray without ceasing or continually. Once again, we are told to give thanks in everything, not just when it's good, but in everything. No matter the situation or what we're going through, we need to acknowledge God. If we are constantly giving thanks, we cannot take God for granted because we will be able to show Him our thankfulness, and in doing so, we are giving God the glory and value which is due Him. God will know we are happy that He is in our lives. We will give Him honor with our lips and our actions, because we have to seek Him, we have to serve Him, we have to worship Him, you know, and we worship Him, like I said, not just in clapping our hands and singing songs, but with our testimony outside these doors, you know, we, we give Him honor. We give Him the worth that He deserves with our testimony. We need to seek His Word. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13 says, Then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. When we seek something out, we search for it until we find that which we are looking for. The Word of God is something we should search out daily. How can we boast of His great name and the deeds when we don't know them ourselves? How can we teach this truth to the coming generation when we don't take the time to study it out? How will we be able to give God the honor He deserves when we don't fully understand who He is? And that's where that song, that, um, he's, he's my daily bread, He's the air that I breathe. If we really do that, if He is really the air that we breathe, we're going to study His Word. We're going to eat, we're going to sleep, you know, we're going to eat, sleep, and drink Jesus. We're going to breathe Him in constantly. We're going to be able to tell of His deeds so that the people will know what a great God it is that we serve, you know. Second Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But how can we handle it rightly when we don't know it? when we don't search it out. We expect our children to honor us with their obedience, good behavior and good works. We want them to excel in school and in all they do because it makes us feel proud that our children are diligent in their studies. You know, we, we take some credit, right? <laughs> We're after them, we teach them, we sit with them. Those of us at homeschool, you know, I'm the teacher, so if they do good, you feel good, if they do bad, 
oh goodness, what am I doing? You know, am I being a bad teacher? I've gone through that <laughs> this past um, year being in Mexico. You know, there's times that I would just break down and cry and say, Lord, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm the teacher, but he's not learning. He doesn't like school anymore when he used to like it. It must be my fault. I must be a horrible teacher. I must not know what I'm doing. Maybe I should just send him to public school. You know, send him to the Mexican schools, which I've heard are not that great. But, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't know what it is that I'm doing. You know, it, it, I don't know, you know, and, and it would make me question myself because when they excel, you know, I did it because of me. You know? But when they fail the same way, you give yourself, it's like, what am I doing wrong? You know, what is it that I'm doing wrong? So as God's children that we are, we need to be the kind of children that our Heavenly Father can be proud of. Obedient, well-behaved, in other words, having good testimony, hard workers, <coughs> full of good deeds towards others, towards our fellow brothers and sisters and those that don't know Christ as well, and studious of His Word to bring Him honor. You know, just like we expect our earthly children to work hard, to study, to behave, we need to do the same thing towards our Father. Our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we need to serve Him. So not only do we worship, we seek Him, but we need to serve Him. And we can serve Him proclaiming His goodness. Like Psalm 105, verses 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. It says, Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing songs to him, talk of all his wondrous works. It says to make known his deeds among the peoples and to talk of his wondrous works. When we serve, we perform duties or services for another person or organization. We can serve our Lord in many ways. This song tells us to make his deeds known and to talk of all his wondrous works. How are people going to know the great God we serve if we don't proclaim or tell them about him? The Great Commission speaks of this as well. We must go and teach the nations or the peoples. How can, they, how can we teach the people if we don't seek him out daily in prayer and study of his word? We need to seek him to be able to serve him. Because how can we teach or make his deeds known if we don't know them? You know, like you were teaching in the morning in, in Sunday school. Um, people will say, they might describe, it's like, how do you know the Bible's true? You know, how, what, what makes me want to believe? Just because you say it? Just because you say the Bible says so? You know, we need to be, um, we need to be worthy, like it says, uh, 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 show ourselves approved by studying, by seeking out his word so we can tell others. Deuteronomy 10, 12 says, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. We have to give our all to God. We need to serve him. We need to seek him. The other way that we can serve God is by serving others, by serving our fellow brothers and sisters in the church and those outside. Galatians 5, 13 through 14 says, For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We love ourselves pretty well, right? We take care of ourselves, right? <laughs> I don't think anybody hates themselves, you know? <laughs> We are not going to let ourselves be hurt, go without, or speak bad about ourselves. You know, how many of you go out there and say, oh, you know what, I'm just horrible. I don't like to do this, I don't like to do that, I'm lazy, I never clean, I don't like to, you know, who goes and talks like that about themselves, you know? <laughs> Nobody, right? We try to live as comfortably as we can possibly make it. Do we do this with others? Is this how we treat others? Hebrews 13, 1 through 3 reads, Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are ill-treated, since you also are in the body. Romans 12, 9 through 10 says, Let love 
Be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. These two verses talk about showing love towards others. And not just my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, but everybody. It says hospitality to strangers, but how many of us open our doors to strangers, especially in the world nowadays? You know, of course we have to be wise, but there's plenty of ways. You know, like um, I think my husband mentioned it, that if you go to Walmart, you know, it's showing kindness towards others. They might be all frazzled out. Don't add to their distress by saying, oh my goodness, you're taking forever. What is this? And standing in line and complaining, you know, she's had enough or he's had enough hearing that. You know, why not be calm and perhaps when we get to that person, say, don't worry about it, you know. And as long as sometimes we have a good attitude, it will kind of stick to the others and they'll stop complaining. They'll stop saying anything because then it kind of brings them to shame. It's like, oops, you know, maybe I shouldn't be saying, oh my goodness, you know, these people are so slow and whatever. But if you just talk nice, they might feel bad about it and then they, they will stop because I believe that happened to me once at least I think I was there they were all talking about it and everything and I think Christopher was with me and I told him I said it's okay I said well she's probably just having problems you know we just need to be patient and wait and everybody behind me that was complaining they just kind of got quiet and didn't do anything anymore <laughs> you know it makes them feel bad it makes them I guess reflect on their words and what they were doing so we need to outdo one another in showing honor you know it's, we can sh be show-offs in this case. <laughs> God wants us all to be show-offs, you know, by treating our fellow brother, you know, treat him better, you know, always treat them better. First um, John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and he who loves is born of God and knows God. So, that's a biggie, you know. If we love, we know God, and we are His. So, I, it doesn't say, but... Um, what if we don't love? You know, God is love. So if we don't love, we don't know God. And if we're not of God, then there's only one other place. <laughs> you know, and I'd rather love and be with my Lord. Amen? Amen? When we serve each other, we are serving the body of Christ. His church, His church. Because each individual forms part of the body of Christ, which is the local church. If we extend that love to everyone and to other churches, we will grow strong in unity and reach even more souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. This touches on what my husband preached in the morning, how we all are connected, how we form that net. And we can love each other and grow stronger and cover the weaknesses of each other. Because perhaps I'm weak in one area, but you're not. So you can cover my weaknesses in love and through it, be stronger and help each other out so that we can reach more people for God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, verse 15 through 16 says, Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of lip that gives thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Amen. Amen. This is what God wants from us. He wants us to worship Him. He wants us to seek Him. And He wants us to serve Him. It's, it's who He created us for. You know, he, he expects it of us, for us to serve Him. When we do that, we cannot take Him for granted. Let us not take God for granted. Instead, let us love on Him with our worship in remembrance of all that he has done for us, the great sacrifice of his blood shed for us sinners, and the blessings which he bestows to us daily, though we are undeserving. Let us seek his presence, not for the gifts, but for who he is, and search out his word diligently to show ourselves approved. And let us serve him by proclaiming his good works and spreading the gospel through the teaching of the same. Serve him with the service to each other in love. God forgave us much, so let us love much. As it says in Luke 7, 47, Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. 
this verse is talking about the woman, the woman who goes and breaks the alabaster and washes his feet and tries it with the uh, with her hair and uh, the was the uh, uh, Pharisee, the, the one who's there. You know, he's like, if he knew who she was, you know, she wouldn't. He wouldn't allow that. You know, so God knowing asked him a question. You know, who do you think uh, before this? He asked, you know, who do you think is is more appreciative because uh, it talks about two people and their debt being forgiven and he says well I suppose the one that owed the most is going to be more grateful and so he tells them you're correct you know and so he begins to say this woman you know came and did all this for me when I came into your house you didn't wash my feet you didn't kiss me but she hasn't stopped kissing me you know and so he tells at the end he says therefore her sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but he who is forgiven little loves little. You know, God forgave us our sins, so we need to love him much. Amen. You know, he died on the cross for us, knowing that we were sinners, knowing all that we would do in our lives, you know, and everything. And yet God still died for us. I would say he forgave us much, so we need to love much. Amen. Amen. My last verse in conclude, well, this is my conclusion, which I already said it. But the last verse, which I think sums it up, and so I left it for last. It says, Hebrews 13, verse 20 through 21 says, Now may the God of peace who brought you, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 And that uh, it's like a prayer, you know, that God will work in our lives, that he will help us not to take him for granted, because plenty of times we do, we go throughout life, and we just know that he's God, that he's great, that he's big, that he's wonderful, that he's faithful, and we take it for granted. We don't acknowledge his faithfulness, his greatness, and everything that he does for us. We just go through life breathing it in and out every day, but never giving him the worth, the value that he deserves. Amen? Amen. So let us not take God for granted and show him that we love him, worshiping him in spirit and in truth, you know, seeking him out and serving him in all of these. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.